Hey guys, just want to take you through some of my older designs first, show you some of the features that I had with them. Um, essentially at this point I had two pieces, uh, sorry, just before this point I had three, two pieces, That now at this point I had three pieces. Um, the side pieces here that we see on the side, the central pieces here, and the angled pieces. Now this originally only had the these pieces and the flat pieces and I came in at another time I, I called it the same thing and replaced those pieces but essentially it's the same ship as my original ship with my original parts so um, that's what I came up with at first and I think this is in my first video if you watch my first video so it's kinda cool it, it uses the stock engines it does get uh, very slow speeds but it's consistent and it's stable um, this is my twin bow. Uh, this didn't go very far, but I might redesign it. I don't know, because I have a lot more parts now that are available. It's very blocky. looks kind of like, you know, Lego or something. Um, my idea was, hey, get two hulls in and have a little platform in between and, you know, see how it, how it works. It, it turned out that it was just a lot of, uh, it was pretty slow. So the Mark II introduced, as you can see, I've taken off the engines here, the stock engines, and I've moved on to my own engines, which I designed to go internally to the ship. As you can see at this level here, they, they get cut in half. So uh, they're made for the deeper hull uh, vessels that I've created. Um, this original um, uh, one layer hull here, it, it's it's not going to work. It's it's okay Kerbal height wise, you know, guys can go through here, some maybe low, you know, some low key equipment, smaller fuel tanks and stuff can be placed inside, but these engines are not going to fit. Um, I think they're 1.5 meters tall. Um, I'm not sure about that. I think they're 1.5 meters tall, so they're not going to fit in there because I think I made the height in here only one meter high. So uh, that's that design. Starting to use my own parts. So here we have the foil connected in the proper position and we have a couple wheels back here to roll it along the ground to get in the water. I still have basic engines on here from the regular game. I put a couple control surfaces on here and this thing actually does work quite well. So this one worked quite well. After testing that I wanted something a little bit better. And I went to foil test 4. Foil Test 4 uses more of my parts and my own engine. So I have my own engine on here. I have um, larger control surface uh, at the back. I've What I've done on this one was instead of mounting it up front and underneath making the front sit very high in the water, I've mounted it internal to the hull a bit, kind of by, by instead of putting one of these larger sections in the middle, I put a, a, a regular deck section and then I attached it to the in, uh, to, to that deck section in here. So it actually sits a lot lower in the water and it, it actually is very stable and very fun to, to uh, pilot. I've already seen this bow piece. What this piece is here in the middle is a riser. Uh, I basically made to uh, accommodate ships with um, a much taller stacked hull. And what I did was I wanted the, these here to be, and they're not textured properly yet. This is like the first edition of that texture, so it's not finished yet. But what I wanted was this causeway here to be textured like this is, like uh, these uh, grates. So the grates are going to continue to the front. I'm going to create a new, um, almost like a terrace that's going to sit on the front of the ship where, be where Kerbals can stand out there and just kind of take a look out at the water. Um, also, another thing I was thinking of was maybe, hey, these are big intakes for something. I don't know. Anyways, I wanted to make something a little different looking, and that's what I did. Okay, so this here is something that you might want to create to land and launch vehicles from. And this has a bunch of cool stuff on it that you that you haven't seen yet. So this is a, a shallow hull design, meaning it has the rear deck here um, is what sits in the water. You're going to get splashes come up sometimes up over these deck this deck height here. So anything in here conceivably without struts could get knocked off and, and blown out the back of the boat. Um, now that's just a limitation of the game. It, it does allow some effects, particle effects, to come through um, solid objects, and uh, I don't know how that's ever going to, you know, if it's ever going to be fixed or not. So just prepare that some water could 
push through and uh, you have to have such stuff strutted in here to, to make sure it's not going to be blown out. Um, this one incorporates the ramp at the back and it incorporates the corner, the, the, the sculpted corner pieces that I created. It has the carrier deck individual pieces and the standard hull deck center pieces. Um, here I mm, <laughs> took a stab at making some kind of ad hoc, you know, command tower thing with a bunch of air intakes that look like st chimney stacks and stuff like that. I just did that for the hell of it to make it look different. To the front is what really matters. This is the carrier launch. Um, uh, I don't know what they call it. The thing at the end of the carrier has kind of like an incline to it. So when your plane hits it, it kind of gives you that extra little boost up into the air. That's the end of the carrier. It works quite well. Um, when, when it's combined with the lower piece here, you have this little shelf in here that can be used to carry things or put some extra fuel or I usually strut this area up. It kind of looks like a World War II aircraft carrier. So this thing is pretty pretty massive but it's by no means the biggest one I've I've come up with uh, being that it's only a single hull high uh, it's fairly large I, I designed it stationary to just to test um, again I've never had it, this one in the water but I do have one similar to this in the water um, you can see that it has all it has the right the, the, the lower bow section and it has the riser and the terrace that I was going to design would sit in here. I was also thinking of designing a control surface that kind of out hangs underneath here, like a like almost like a nose, and that would have uh, some some aerofoils could fit on there and stuff like that. Um, this is the launch nose for the carrier. Uh, if we go this way, that was a crew compartment there. Um, we go right to the back and rotate it around. It's a flat, totally a flat back, no ramp. So this was just totally just to, to mock up the deck and to mock up the uh, the nose pieces to see how it would all come out to look like in a carrier format. So this this was this was before I started making my boat parts. I had the deflector panels and the and the fieldtastic mod that I kind of made the parts that I made, and I figured, hey, let's make a long range. I had a guy stuck in the Arctic, so I wanted to make a vessel that could go and get him and bring him back. Just for the heck of it, I designed this. This uses all stock parts except for the deflector panels and for the fieldtastic mod here to regenerate fuel. But this one here is in the last video, I believe it is in boat part seven or yeah I think it's the one in boat part seven so the guy stumbles out and I drop him off the front and he looks up at the ship this is from part seven so it's quite big it has crew compartments up here for a ton of Kerbals I think there's eight Kerbal capacity up there um, I had to build a special vehicle just because this this here does not allow the guys to climb up they get stuck and when they fall over on a slanted surface it's a bad scene. They um, they become stuck in the game, and you can't even get them out with the jetpack. They just lay, lie there dead. As you can see, I have a wide open hull design. That means the center deck I didn't connect all the way through. Um, what I wanted to do was uh, allow a massive payload to be carried underneath this thing whether that's uh, you know if you want uh, a huge ground vehicle to be carried up in here and dock with a clamp and then roll it out when you pull up to an island roll it out onto the land and continue driving around this can do it this thing can hold a massive 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 vehicle this thing has I think this is a three meter high set yeah that's a three meter high section it's another uh, one and a half meters to the next high level so we have three meters there one and a half meters there and about 2.25 meters down at the bottom. So we have, uh, you know, <laughs> enough room in here to hold uh, four Bobcat things. I don't know, that's uh, somebody else's mod, but, you know, those Rover type uh, vehicles. You could probably put four of those in here. It's ridiculously huge. So moving to the top, we have another layer here. Um, so we have another layer up above that and it's hard to actually see because I have this thing sitting very high but there's another layer up above here that's where all the fuel and motor and uh, and stuff is being held in this one um, I have the engine on the central level so that it's out of the way of the storage area you're gonna see splashing down in here as I mentioned in the hangar you don't want to have anything especially in the last third of the ship um, that doesn't have any struts on it because it will get ripped off and thrown at the back of the boat um, this is only temporary until it gets up to a stable speed. So 
I'm just going to give it the rest of the throttle. I mean, you can jam the throttle all the way down if you want. It's not going to hurt nothing. You're going to see that the acceleration slowly starts going down a bit. But what we're going to have here is a lift out of the water. See that? That's the actual hydrofoil lifting the hull out, making it more efficient, and speeding it up. So once we pick up, as we pick up speed, the effect on these wings increases, therefore giving it more lift and lifting it out of the water higher and higher. So here we can see at the front, or up above the surface of the water. These are angled at about 10 degrees or so, just to give that lift. If you angle them too steep, it will stall out. It'll lift, stall out, splash, lift, stall out, splash. It does have the speed that we want and it does have the stability and the size that we need to um, support aircraft launches and, and receive aircraft. So I think this is pretty cool for a first carrier attempt. And now we're cruising. Quiet. So I think the quiet speed's about 59. Once it gets up to 59 and if it's sitting a more level than what it was it uh, doesn't make any noise whatsoever, except for when it hits the actual occasional wave. It carries a lot, it's huge, it goes fast, you're gonna have to put up with a little bit of something going wrong. Um, in this case it's leaning to the right, so the good thing is it doesn't blow up, so that's good. E8 and 30 and back down it goes. Now as soon as it does come back down all these are colliding therefore creating a lot more drag and it slows it down a lot quicker. Now with a reversing engine it should slow down a little quicker but I think it's alright with one engine right now. And then she's silent. So on under six you can see she's silent. She sits nice and level when she's not moving fast so should be able to take off and land from this thing very easily and we're gonna see how fast it turns So here we have the new decking, and that's what I wanted to show you. The new decking I came up with. I, I, I kind of looked at some pictures online and then just remade my own and textured up and scuffed it up in uh, Photoshop a little bit. Moved, uh, uh, kept the runway to one end, and, uh, and then uh, it does have the aircraft carrier launch thing at the front. I put this little uh, uh, thing on here, basically three lights. It does light up the whole, the whole deck, which is kind of cool, um, and the... Uh, uh, the con towers over here again. I want to make my own con tower. Unfortunately, time restrictions being as they are, it's very difficult to uh, to get that done. So this 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 shows you the whole ship from the back, which is cool. So we have the ramp coming up here. I decided to do an overhanging carrier deck. Um, what you could do is have it stepped way out at the back so that it sticks way out and have it you know. But I figured this is good enough. So this is kind of top heavy. Um, I don't have any problems with it in the water though, as I said before. It's for store. It's not only a carrier, but it's actually a landing vehicle. So you can actually launch something out of it to, to go on land. And not only is it huge, can take aircraft and carry stuff. This thing is wicked fast, as you've seen in the video. So if we quickly go and just put a piece down that I made for the hull deck. Um, uh, my old piece was this one. This is the side cross section for the hull. Now when I put this on here it might look, it looks very awesome, okay? Now the thing is I'm gonna put another hull section down. That's irrelevant. However, this is my new hull side piece that I've just created. So I put this down and I'm gonna show you the difference between the two. So if we take a look at this strut here we take a look at this strut on my old part look what happens when I go near here you see I try to put a strut down on this thing and look what happens it puts the strut down in the middle
So the problem with that was in Unity, uh, or I was exporting this directly from um, 3D Studio Max. And 3D Studio Max, I couldn't. I I I I try. I I made two boxes to make up this mesh, and then I gr I grouped those two pieces together. But it it still triangulates that shape, and m makes it like occupy this space here, which should be free for other things. So if I try to go and add, um, you know, a little uh, thing here to to try and put something on the ground there, you see, I can put things on the ground here, no problem. I try and put things here and look it's just floating in the air so my my uh, my solution to that was getting my hands dirty with uh, with unity and um, suffering a little uh, a couple hours tonight and look what I've come up with okay so now what this allows me to do use the entirety of my interior I can now uh, take the parts, arrange them any which way I want. So they can't, of course, go over top of other parts, but I can take this now, drop that in there. I can take this, put this on here. I can fill up this whole area any which way. I also have a few guys who want to help me test this thing. So once I get the basic parts uh, sorted out, I will share out with those couple guys. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. <laughs> All right. So let's try this. And three, two, one, go. <laughs> I didn't throttle up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there we are. There's the first successful boat launch ever, from me anyways. <laughs> it's pretty damn stable and it would have worked, but I forgot to throttle the engine up, so I feel like an idiot. Anyway, I'm not sure how high we're going to make it, but... This is insane. This little rocket made it pretty far. I guess we can't forget about our launch platform. So, uh, oops. Um, it looks like the upon reloading, um, you might want to tuck those things in before you leave this thing. Once we get up, we got to give it a lot of throttle to get up this hill. So how much better, I don't know, can you get than that? I think what we could do, um, if there weren't no limitations in the... I mean, if I really tried to push it, I think I could make a larger vehicle, wider, and make uh, and take off some of the larger rockets with this thing. Um, we could also just make a flat platform uh, and launch from that. Uh, I wanted it to kind of hide the rocket, to make it, to mask it, make it look like it's a building on the water, launching it. But you know, to each his own. And uh, thanks for watching.